Hey fellas, what is poppin', what is going on? Today, Little Nightmares is about to turn 7 years old, and in celebration of that, I'm gonna recap the history of world records for its any percent speedrun. How Little Nightmares was beaten in 32 minutes, and more importantly, the people who helped make it happen. Please enjoy. Oh! Yes! I did yes. it! Let's go! Oh, fucking right. We did it! Yes. We fucking did it! Oh my we god, I actually did it! The date was April 27th, and the first ever completed speedrun of Little Nightmares was a 1 hour, 50 minute, and 52 second time by Anurin. Now obviously this run was not very good, but it wasn't supposed to be. This was a stepping stone, the time to beat, and it would be none other than Alyssa Mintchip to do exactly that just 3 hours later, with a time of 1 hour and 36 seconds. This run was the first to show an understanding of how the game's stamina system functions, but didn't actually utilize any real stamina routes, and was generally just a fast playthrough. Just another three hours passed before Alyssa got the world's first sub-hour any percent speedrun. Time. All right. Well, that was awesome. 57.41. We just PB'd by almost three minutes. While this run was rudimentary like the last, it did display a few new strategies. Here, Alyssa dropped down this hole and hit a checkpoint at the bottom, which saved around 20 seconds compared to slowly riding this noose down. Alyssa also had strategies to run through some stealth sections, but she played it safe for most of them. The next day, Alyssa blew her last run out of the water with a 5144. Not only was this the first run to contain actual stamina routes, but it was also the first run to utilize Alyssa's new discoveries in the kitchen chapter, mainly skipping hiding in this box here and committing Grand Theft Auto in this elevator, and also baiting the chef into the meat grinder room to grab this key early. This as well as skipping the intro cutscene by reloading the checkpoint saved for about 3 minutes. But this run was 6 minutes faster, so what happened? It turns out, just 3 hours earlier, Alyssa, who had actually created the Little Nightmare speedrunning discord and speedrun.com page, decided that timing would no longer end when reaching the final staircase, but instead 3 minutes earlier when the mirror breaks for the final time. This was because those final three minutes were essentially a glorified walking simulator. So now every completed speedrun was about three minutes faster. The next day, Alyssa got the first ever sub 50 minute run with a 49.44. Sub 50. Sub 48 is real, probably even sub 47. This run only used one new skip, where Alyssa grabbed this key and left the room without the chef noticing her. But the rest of the time save came from her experience. She had become a lot more familiar with the game, and thanks to this, she only died a few times. Five hours later, Alyssa would discover the biggest skip yet. Stare him down. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! We did it! We skipped the fucking bathroom! Oh, yes! This was massive. Normally, you would have to go through a long process of hiding, breaking this mirror, climbing into the ceiling, and dropping down, but this skipped all of it. Elevators only activate if Six is standing on them and the chef isn't, so while tight, juking the chef here saved about two minutes. Three hours later, a new runner, Daylight, would use the skip in a run, but unfortunately they lacked a lot of the experience that Alyssa had, so they only saved about 8 seconds over her time. Using bathroom skip, as well as a new one, sink skip, where runners would parkour off the sink and grab the dresser to skip dragging the suitcase and climbing up the right, Alyssa beat Daylight by walking 3 minutes with a 46.22. Forty six twenty two. Forty six twenty two with two deaths. So I think somewhere around like forty five fifteen should be doable. Maybe like right around forty five. Sub forty four would be a really, really good run. Notably, this was also the first run to skip hiding from Roger in the nursery by just running right past him, saving about 15 seconds, as well as the first run to jump past Roger in the library, saving another 15 seconds. 
The next day, Daylight got the first sub-46 with a 45-52. Five hours later, Alyssa would once again beat Daylight by 30 seconds with a 45-17, hitting every skip and dying only three times. Pick up. Pick up the mirror. Pick it up. We did it. Forty-five seventeen is the new world record. Now I have to go grind kitchen a thousand times. <laughs> oh yeah, forty-four is way achievable. With with some of the new stuff we found out, like my goal now is uh forty three thirty. I want to get the run down to 43.30 just with the stuff we know right now, and if we find more stuff, obviously, then it'll improve. Yep, Daylight, you have a goal again. You can probably do it with just one less death, honestly. I died three times that run. One day after Alyssa's 45.17, Daylight reposted with a 44.06. This run was incredibly advanced for its time, being the first ever deathless run. For the first time since the game released, multiple days passed without a new world record. Five days later, on May 6th, a new record would be set. But it wasn't Daylight or Alyssa. The last to run set a 30 second world record with a 43.30. While no new skips were found in this time, where this run really shined was in its outstanding audio quality. In seriousness though, the last to run was a major contributor to the glitch hunting side of Phil Nightmare speedruns. They used one of their discoveries in this run to skip the hunger animation in the first chapter. By ledge grabbing over the trigger that activates the animation, they were able to make the game think the animation happened, but the ledge grab cancelled it, saving about 5 seconds. This was also the first run to pull off the new faster grinder skip, where you just jump right up to the key and bait the chef around the table. Yes. Finally, after another week, Alyssa got a new world record by 30 more seconds with a 42.36, the world's first sub-43. Maybe. Oh my god. Oh my god, we did it. Oh. 42.36. Oh, Jesus. I did. We just beat the world record by 31 and a half seconds. Oh my God, that is solid, solid. Oh man, I'm so happy that we got that. I am just, oh wow. Nobody has beaten this game faster than I have for what that is worth. <laughs> and over the next week, she brought it down further to a 41.53. Boom. 42.10. That is a world record by 26 and a half seconds. Woo! We even did it with a gold lady split. Oh boy. Woo. There it is. <laughs> 4153. <laughs> awesome. The first sub 42. And unless new skips were found, likely the last minute barrier, as Alyssa's current sum of best wasn't even below a 41. But that would all change on June 8th of 2017. Almost two months after release, Crowbar Krolak had discovered something huge. Crowbar had found a way to skip every single hunger animation in the game. By holding one direction and spamming the opposite direction, Six will stumble onto the ground. If you trip over a hunger trigger, the game will register that you have activated the hunger animation, but the tripping animation will take priority, skipping the animation altogether. Throughout the 11 hunger animations in the game, this saved over a minute. 
just what Alyssa needed to break the sub-41 barrier. The following day, Alyssa would lower her time by 10 seconds with a 41-44. 41-44. Last year of college, awesome. The run was less than optimal, but the hunger skips more than made up for her time losses, with her hitting three of the nine she went for. As well as this, it was also the first run to use another skip from Crowbar. Since the game had came out, the janitor boss fight was more or less done as intended, or in other words, very slow. Crowbar had found out that if you bait out Roger's grab here and make it to the boss room fast enough, you're invincible to him, so you can just pull both bars without any waiting, which saved around 20 seconds. Alyssa was unsurprisingly not too happy about this run, so in the following week, to nobody's shot, Alyssa beat her time by another 20 seconds. Alrighty. Well, that's one world record today. <clears throat> Some of best is down to 40.19.99, so yeah, we can definitely get sub 40, some of best. Over the next week, Alyssa had finally brought her time down to a 40.57. Looking at like a 58, I think. Fifty-seven point one four. Oh my god, we did it! Oh, finally! Oh, Jesus. Sub 41. And that is a new any percent world record for little nightmares still so much time to save unbelievable still so much although Alyssa's run was still a full minute behind her sum of best this run contained very few mistakes with the most major being that she missed all three hungers in chapter two being the first sub-41, this run was incredible, but not only that, it marked the end of an era for Little Nightmare speedrun. This is because in the following weeks, the first of three DLCs would come to the game, which, in its popularity, shifted the focus of speedrunners away from the main game for quite a while. It wouldn't be until September, a full three months after Alyssa's sub-41, that the next record would be set. That's because she was taking a much needed break from the game during that time. That was until Ekdysis entered the fray. During Alyssa's hiatus, Ekdysis was rising in the ranks, and by the time Alyssa had returned, Ekdysis had set the world's second sub-42, less than a minute behind her. And that was Little Nightmares, and as a custom, we always like to- Remember the name Ekdysis. September 24th. Alyssa broke her old world record by over 30 seconds with a 40-21. Alright, so we didn't lose sub-40 to that stupid mistake in the grinder area because we still were about probably like 10 seconds off even if we did get that part correct. But uh, that's a new world record, so we got it. There it is. This run was nearly perfect for the time. She only missed one hunger, and the biggest mistake in the run was a movement fumble in the grinder section. There was clear room for improvement here, but Alyssa was happy with it for now. All was radio silent for another three months. Zetsubo had sent a message telling about a trick his girlfriend Tabs had found by complete accident during her casual playthrough. So what happened there? Essentially, the hooks that move on this screen are reused by the game, which means that when it reaches a certain point off screen, it will teleport from the left to the right, repeating infinitely. Tabs found that by grabbing this hook just as it went over the wall, Six would ride it through the wall, and by some miracle, riding it to the teleport trigger would take Six with it. This saved a whopping 40 seconds off of the run, turning the dream of a sub-40 minute run into an inevitability. Four days later, Alyssa would get that run. This was Alyssa's magnum opus.
my god. We fucking... Oh my god, we finally did it. Wow. almost exactly a minute off of some of us. We got the skip, we saved 35 seconds on the skip and another just 14 seconds throughout the course of the run. So that actually would have been a world record even without the skip, which is really, really awesome. And we're sub 40, finally at long fucking last. <sighs> but we got it. It was a no reset run too. So. This was Alyssa's final speedrun of Little Nightmares, but the mark she made on the speed game would not be forgotten. I hope you remember the name of Geisus, because he had been grinding too. God damn it, a 41! Oh. Not bad. I'll take it. 40-32. Uh, 57 seconds behind world record now. So 57 more seconds of time save, and I can get that easily. I can get that. I can definitely get that. 5.2. Not bad. 40-27. And we're going to celebrate this, by the way. Oh, I saved time, but it wasn't good enough. A 40-06. I mean, we can do better. And we will do better tomorrow. I have no doubt about that. Wait the lady though, we're gonna celebrate in- They fucking have it, they fucking have it. Please, 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 we're so close. 34, 34, 34. Let's fucking run, we did it! We fucking did it! Oh god, what do I say right now? What do I say right now? I fucking did it. I fucking did it. It took me from January 1st, from fucking January 1st, January 1st, until now. It is now April 10th, and I just got world fucking record. We earned it, guys. This run had also used a new strategy from the grinder room, found by Parhelion, a very well-respected playdead speedrunner. Speaking of Parhelion, his recent glitch hunting and his skill in similar games led him to a 15-second world record just short of a week after a dicey sub-40, a 39-19. With the first try hook warp and only two missed hungers, the only major mistake was this fall in Chapter 2. If not for those few time losses, this run would be nearly perfect, and time proved that fact, as no world records would be set for another six months. It was September, and a very familiar name entered the community. Distortion 2, one of the most well-known names in speedrunning, had just started speedrunning the game. Within days, he found a new skip. Oh! I did it! I fell, but I did it! Oh my god, I actually did it! By bumping into this hanging sausage slightly before grabbing it, Six will transfer her momentum into the sausage, and by jumping off the sausage at the right time, that momentum will be translated vertically. By then baiting out this guy's grab, you can climb up untouched, saving around 15 seconds, and skipping the entire table section. One exception though, this skip was hard. Easily the hardest skip found in the game so far. Over the next month, Disc started improving, getting a 39-35 on October 8th. Not a world record, but pretty close. Alright. <laughs> we'll get it soon, for sure. Pro I'll probably keep doing this game until I get like sub-39 or something. Should be doable. Two weeks later, he actually did it. After only a month of running the game, Dis beat Parhelion's world record by 3 seconds with a 39-16. Woo! Alright, we did it! 
Barely. Just barely, but we did it. <laughs> nice, dude. This was also the first run to use chair skip, where you jumped off this plank to just barely reach the handle without dragging the chair, which saved around 5 seconds. The run was overall incredibly clean. He hit 8 out of 10 hungers, and his only major mistake was missing sausage skip. The day after this run, Parhelion would find a new strat where you actually rode this box down to the bottom of the pit, as opposed to jumping down and reloading the checkpoint at the bottom, which saved around 5 seconds. Just two days after finding this, Barhelium came back to beat Dist by an unbelievable 0.08 seconds. This one was notably the first run to do Barhelium's new pulley skip, although he lost way more time than it saved by going for it here. Five days after Barhelium's run, Dist shaved another 8 seconds off of his time with a 39.08. Nice. <clears throat> and the gold to finish it off. All right, got the recce back <laughs> by eight seconds. I'm glad I got the sausage skip finally after so, oh God, so many fucking failed sausage skips. Still no sub 39 though. It would be a matter of days before one of these two runners would get the world's first sub 39 minute run, but who would it be? Yeah, I lost nine seconds. Fucking terrible. <laughs> At least it's sub thirty nine, but uh, that sucks. <laughs> I think if I, if I didn't make that mistake at the end, I I might I I don't know if I would have I don't know if I would have kept kept playing. I mean, it could still be better, but I know I know. Well, it's a PB. Not by much, but hey, it's a PB. I mean, it's world record as well, but yeah. A couple of days after Disc 3851, Parhelion found an even faster way to do pulley skip. Instead of going left at all, he found that you could go back to the right and drop down, and there was a piece of broken geometry that Six could get wedged in, which reset her fall damage. After some difficult parkour, you could make it to the right 15 seconds faster than dropping down on the left. It was also during this time that a new runner, Nico, had joined the community. Nico absolutely revolutionized the speedrun meta, as not only would he discover several strategies, but he also developed tools like the Ellen Speedrun Helper, which gave runners teleporting tools for practice and a stamina meter. Up to this point, speedrunners hardly understood how the game's stamina system worked. This new tool allowed Nico and other runners to research the exact science of the stamina system and develop much faster stamina routes in many sections of the game. Since the sub-40, runners had been using a technique called sprint pulsing, which essentially meant you would hold and release the sprint button in consistent cycles, which was very slow since you'd spend half of your time at walking speed, so Nico's new stamina route saved a good amount of time. But that wasn't the end of Nico's discoveries. He also discovered the garbage pit skip. Turns out this door the chef opens is actually interactable with the player, so with a precise jump he was able to jump off this pillow to reach the door handle, saving about 20 seconds over dropping into the pit below. It was also at this point that the load remover for the game was created, of course by Nico. This meant that whenever runners paused the game or during loads between chapters, the timer would pause. This created even more potential time save for the run. With all these time saves, Nico had already lowered his sum of best to at low 37. This truly was an era of time save after time save being found, and all of that was about to come together, because on November 24th, a new world record was set. And once again, it was Nico. Notably, this was also the first run to use checkpoint reload strats. Since Nico's new load remover paused the timer during pauses and loads, you could reload without incrementing the timer. Right here, since this checkpoint sets 6 on the right of the room, once he reloaded, Nico saved about 5 seconds compared to running from the left to the right. This run also used a new pulley skip route, named Risky Pulley, where Nico dropped onto a different piece of broken geometry, but this was much harder and only saved about 5 seconds. 33. And this is where I end at 38. Unfortunate. The reason that Nico was upset by this run was because this 3851 was technically a 3833 after being retimed to in-game time, so he was still about 5 seconds off the world record. 
As for the rest of the run, he had a first try garbage pit skip, first try hook warp, second try sausage skip, but he missed three hungers, losing about 20 seconds. Two days later though, Barhelium would get this run. Thirty-seven fifty-three. He missed Sausage Skip, but other than that, the run was incredible. About a week later, Barhelion would also find a strat to slip by the chef here, which was about two seconds faster than sliding past his grab. The next world record would be set on December 22nd, but first we need to talk about Pocklet. Pocklet had been grinding the individual levels of the game for quite some time now, and some would say that he became a cracked individual. Pocklet would set a huge new world record. Thirty-six fifty-six. This run was absolutely incredible. He hit every single hunger. He got every single skip first try, other than sausage skip, and the run was as close to perfect that it had ever been. In contrast, 2019 was the first time that an entire year passed without a single world record. There were a few discoveries during 2019 though, so I'll go over those. By reloading this checkpoint, you can get a perfect cycle in the eye room. By jumping on top of this monkey toy, you can fall straight through the floor without moving the box. You can crouch underneath this hunger trigger, which was much more consistent than the old strat. Finally, the biggest time save of all, they found that if you're fast enough, you can make it into this elevator before it closes. All of these combined save around 20 seconds, and on February 20th of 2020, Nico would put all these strats together into a new world record, 6 seconds faster than Pocklet's year-old run. 36.49, pretty good. <laughs> oh look, uh, left split actually automatically updates the, the Reiki. <laughs> nice. 36.49. Could have been better, and I'll try to, to make it better, but for now I'm happy. Oh yeah, right, we're gonna, we're gonna do the same. We're gonna eat the run. Now before I tell you what happened next, we need to talk about sips. Ever since the dawn of Little Nightmare speedrunning, an annoying quirk of picking up objects was that sometimes Six would quickly zip past them. In December of 2019, so about two months after Nico's 3649, decided to lab zips. He found out exactly why they happen. Basically, if an object is obstructed when Six tries to grab it, the game will try to warp her to it. Now for years, that was the extent of their usefulness, but Nico found that by timing a slide during this work, the momentum of the zip would be carried for the entire duration of the slide, which meant that you could go very far in a very short amount of time. Nico immediately found that you could use these cubes to zip across this room before the act could catch you, which saved about 7 seconds, but with no setup, runners didn't attempt it. It wouldn't be until May of 2020, about 3 months after his 3649, that he would find a setup, and just a day later set a 9 second world record of 3640. Gosh darn it. It's not so 40. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, thank you for cube for 100 bits. That was insanely loud. He hit the zip, he hit risky pulley, he got the first try door skip and hook warp, first try sausage skip, he hit early elevator and got all but one hunger. But one month later, he would get another two second world record. <laughs> this is disgusting. This is t disgusting, run. Why is this a PB? Why? I don't want this to be a PB. I should have just failed it. Uh... It was around the time that Nico had set this record that Crazy Diamond Day had started running the game. In only two months, they found many optimized setups for tricks and had amassed quite a lot of skill at the game, and on September 7th of 2020, they would set a 9 second world record of 36.29. 36.30 maybe? 28. 36.29! Hell yeah. yeah! I am... So freaking happy. Hell yeah! We PB'd. And it only took like 10 hours collectively of just practicing shit. Oh god.
It was theoretically possible for runners to get the sub-36, but the entire game was about to be flipped on its head. Five months after Crazy Diamonde's world record, Little Nightmares 2 released. This brought many new runners to the series, one of them being Simon. Simon was an absolute goat at the second game, and in April of 2021, he would transfer that skill to the first game. On April 12th, he would get a 37.03, just 34 seconds off the world record. But Simon would surpass everybody's expectations, when just a day later, he would send this message. This was absolutely incredible. When the chef tried to grab Simon, his hitbox pushed him just far enough to clip him through the door. For the last five years, runners had to climb up the rafters to backtrack and collect the key. This would skip all of that and save nearly two minutes. Massive. A major problem with this though was that nobody could figure it out. It felt completely random. It would take around two days of testing absurd strategies and banging their heads against a wall for a consistent setup to be found. And a day after that, Simon would use it in a run, setting a 50 second world record of 35.41. The next day, a much faster setup would be found by Simon with the help of Nico, where runners no longer had to climb up the dresser in the back. With this, another runner at the time, Rodney, set a 13 second world record of 35.28. I even saved two seconds here. Hey guys, world record! <laughs> I'm 11 seconds off the world record. With the kitchen clip, a sub 35 was already doable. But wait, if we can clip through this door that requires a key with a chef, then what's stopping us from doing it again? We find a nearly identical scenario to this one later in the chapter, right before the grinder room. This would skip the entire grinder room and save a full minute. Sure enough, a day after Rodney's run, Simon would prove it to be possible. And later that day, he would use both kitchen clips in a run to get the world's first sub-35. He did die to the garbage pit clip once though, so five days later, Rodney would improve it by another 10 well, seconds. I like my in -game Sub 35, hype. Here we go. <laughs> That's 10 seconds off world record. We got it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Simon will take it away soon enough. <laughs> Anyways. And sure enough, four days later, Simon would get this run. The first sub-34, but if you thought Simon was done, you're dead wrong. Just a month after this massive discovery, he would do it again. On May 26th, he would discover actual bunny hopping. Depending on Six's stamina value, she will run and jump with different animations. One of these is the zero stamina animation. You almost never want to see this animation during a speedrun as it's incredibly slow. That was until now. Simon found that zero stamina jumps have no speed cap as long as you jump within the first three frames of landing. Hence, bunny hops. Technically, there is a speed cap of 600 units per second, but this still lets you go a lot faster than you're supposed to. Over the following weeks, Simon would make several zero hop routes, completely revolutionizing the way speedrunners looked at stamina. Theoretically, if you hit every zero hop strat, you could save a minute. So let's look at each zero hop that was found.
The first world record to use Zero Hops was a 33-30 set by Simon on May 31st. Apart from being the first world record with Zero Hops, this run was also the first to use a faster light zip setup, where you just throw this block into place. Two weeks later, on June 13th, Simon will get a 33.03. This run was so clean. He hit every zero hop, every hunger, every skip for his try. It would take a perfect run for the sub 33. Up to this point, Simon also wasn't going for risky pooling, but he needed all the time save he could get, so he started including it in his runs. And finally, on September 7th of 2021, the greatest achievement in Little Nightmare's speedrun history, the Sub-33. After this monumental run, Simon abandoned Little Nightmares, going back to the second game. Simon's 3257 is still the most recent world record, and it's been nearly two and a half years since it was set. This video was a massive undertaking for me, so if you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate if you guys could like and subscribe to see future content I release. Have an awesome day, fellas.